Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Bubbly Queen and welcome back to part two of my Let's Play of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. On the last episode, we were introduced to the characters of this trial. And now we're trying to get our buttsy friend out of trouble because he always causes trouble. <laughs> There's really nothing more to it. So we left off where we're there. We're going to call a second witness, apparently, to this case. So we're going to go ahead and see who this witness is. Let's get started. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. It's so bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. What? Please bring Mr. Frank Sahit to the stand. Oh, I have no idea how to pronounce that, so I'm going to butcher his name like there's no tomorrow. Oh, God. Hmm. Mr. Sahit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. Oh, he's so crazy. Mr. Sahit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Ooh. Witness testimony. Witness account. I was going uh, door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Hmm, not sketchy. The man who was, who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Oh, he's so sketchy. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? Seriously. I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why hasn't the phone in the victim's apartment? Oh, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to be working during blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sahe used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record added to the court record. Electricity to Mrs. Stone's building was cut from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Hmm. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, yes, er, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Ooh. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, right? <laughs> this is gonna be really weird. <laughs> this is it, the real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why? You exposed the lies in the testimony that witness just gave. Grave? Lies? What? He was lying? Boy, of course. Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? Mm -hmm. Is he? Is he? Phoenix? Is he? I don't think so. How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradiction, contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face! Woo! Yeah! Um, okay. He's, <laughs> he has no idea what to do. Touch the court record button and point out contradictions in the testimony. When I first played this game, that part was so confusing to me. I'm like, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> Okay, so what we can do here is we can press him for more info or we can present our evidence. 
Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip it because I already know where the contradiction is. So let's see if we can finish this um, um, this uh, blah, blah, trial today. Because I don't want to drag it on for too long because I cut it short last time. Uh, do, 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 do. So let's go. However, the final plan was working. Yeah, yeah. I went to a nearby park and found a whole phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Okay. So let's see what we have here. So, time of death. Uh huh. Sir, you are wrong. You are so very wrong, and I will rub it in your face. Objection! Oh, I love that. It's all good. You found the body at 1 p.m.? You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Ooh. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. Ooh. Look at the autopsy report, dude. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. Ooh. There was nobody to, er, no, body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Aha! Oh, that. Oh, uh. Uh huh. What, sir? What? This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. You can't say that for him. After his testimony, I found that hard to believe. Mr. Sahit. No idea if he's saying his name right, but whatever. Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I. Uh. Well, I. Gee. That's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. Thanks. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. And for some reason, that was so hard for my small ass brain. <laughs> lies always beget more lies. Ooh, that's a cool line. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Oh god, he's lying. The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, he is lying again. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. You are such a liar! Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. You are lying through your teeth, sir. Hmm. I see. You heard a sound saying the time the, on a tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. They just literally said, uh, right? You know what to do. I've got this one. Yes, ma'am, we're on it. Oh, he's lying so much. Hmm. I heard the time. It was a voice saying the time is probably coming from the television. <clears throat> but it was two hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a videotape the program. Sir, they literally just said that was a blackout. Why are you lying? These people, man, you think they've listened to what is being said in court. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. Oh. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. Hell yeah. Oh, I love the music. It's so good. I well oh. mm -hmm. the defense has a point do you have an explanation for this Mr. Sahit no I, I find it quite puzzling myself quite okay sorry about that I had to go do something really quick so I'm back now sorry about that interruption 
He's lying. Ah! Wait, wait, I remember now. Mr. Sahit? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. Yep, he's falling apart. <laughs> he's so gross, sorry. My my apologies, your honor. It, er, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sahit. Let's hear your testimony one more time, please. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. What? That must have been what I saw. Excuse me? What? You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. <laughs> Hearing the time. I didn't hear the time, actually saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Was there? Yeah, the murder weapon the killer used to do hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Now, find a contradiction. Um, actually, duh. Let me press him. I don't know, actually don't remember this part. That strikes me a very suspicious mistake. Yes, I can see how you'd be a little doubtful. I'm really sorry. I only just remember that table clock. A table clock? Hmm. How does he know? The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. No, okay, okay, I remember. It's not ah. The weapon was clearly this statue. Duh. What is he talking about? Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Oh yes, the music kicks in, yes! Uh oh! It's so good! Oh god, so good! What? You with your objections and your evidence! Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sahit. Saw it, whatever your name is, you butt face. Hey, I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch, you just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as my statue. My apologies, you dirty... Sir. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright? It appears that the witness testimony was correct. This is a clock. But how would you know that? Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Yes, I have all the problems. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in its hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Ooh, take that, ho! Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... Went into the apartment. You're lying. 
You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah, prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. Ooh, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. I had to go do something again. My bad. <laughs> you struck her with the clock and the clock and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Ooh. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit. The sound you must have left Quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Oh. What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. conjecture. Big words. Can 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 say them. Faceless? Just look at the witness's face. Ugh. He looks like he has to go to the bathroom. Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I, that day, I never. Look, I, I, the clock, I heard, no, I saw, I saw. Ew, he threw his wig at us. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. I saw him. He killed her and he should burn. Burn. Give him death. Ew? <laughs> just, just ew. <laughs> order, order in the court, I say. Your honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Bright. Your Honor? You claim the sound... Blah. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Yes, Your Honor. The sound Mr. Saw with heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply uh, try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So you've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. <clears throat> ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between Mr. Sahit, her, and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sahit, try to way talk your way out of this one. Ha, ha, ha. You forgot one thing. Uh-oh, what's he talking about? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? Damn it. <laughs> if you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Damn it. That is true. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright? It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Oh, no. Yes. Your Honor, <laughs> this means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, oh no, this ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawhead. Damn it. 
came all the way down here to testify and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal because you are a criminal. You lawyers are all slime. Grr, they almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. Don't give up, dude. There's nothing I can do about it now. Hmm. Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. <gasps> yes! Mia! Mia, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! <laughs> but Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. <clears throat> Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and... Think through it. Think, think, think. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Because she was out of the country. Ah! Yeah, the reason you don't have your proof. Right, right? Oh, that's weird. I cannot, uh, oh, okay, let's just move on. <laughs> Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes, ma'am. Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Yeah. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Yes, sir. Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Huh. Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. It's because she was out of the country. She literally returned before she was murdered. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. <clears throat> As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. there the next day. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. Oh, what a big twist. The victim hand reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Saw it? Or should I say, Mr. Did it? <laughs> ew, ew. He foamed. He was foamy. He couldn't handle it. Order, order, I say! Everybody calm down. Well, this case was, has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client? He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Haha. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor? I have to say I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone com bleh, someone complete defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, your honor. At this point, this is the only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. Yay! We did it. And with that, the court is adjourned. We did it, guys. Our first case failed. It turns out that Frank Sawe was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Saha let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Saha grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Ooh, 
That's so unlucky. Tragic. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. Wow, it's already this late. District Court, Defendant Lobby number 2. Numero dos. Oh, I still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Oh, Mia, thanks. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all. You'll fight your own battles in there. Yay! It's been a while since I've been in a trial and on such a satisfying note. I've never seen this chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must, be, must feel. Oh god, is he okay? Oh, my life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy, what's wrong now? <clears throat> oh, Nick. Oh, he's so sad. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no. I mean, bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. Oh, he's probably sad because she's dead. But, but, Cindy, Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. She was a... Ah! Sorry. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> Harry. H Harry. Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent <laughs> Harry Butts. <laughs> I just got the joke. <laughs> I'm so slow. Hey, um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie, my treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. <laughs> hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Mm. Oh, hey. H here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Oh, that's sweet. R really? You you made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Nice. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And and she was just playing with me for a fool. <laughs> Don't that make you I just want to cry? <laughs> oh, it's okay, Larry. You'll find a better one. Larry. Are you so sure? E Excuse me? I think she talked quite a lot about you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? H huh? Oh, yeah. Right. What the heck is she talking about? She's talking about the statue. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? It was presented in court like a bajillion times. Were you not sitting there? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. She took it with her when she traveled. Hmm, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Mm-hmm. Well, make of it what you will. <clears throat> hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. <laughs> that's nice. Really, I am, thanks. Don't cry, Larry, it's okay. <laughs> okay, bud. Hope that made him feel a little better. I think he'll be okay. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People too. We never really know 
if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Oh. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yes. Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink on a toast to innocent... Blah. We'll drink to toast... We'll drink a toast to innocent but... Why is that sentence so weird? <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry... <laughs> you were saying part of why he, you became... A lawyer was because of him? Uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Yeah! And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay me. Unless you count the clock he gave me. <laughs> I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Wow, isn't that a slumber ending? <laughs> the end! Well, there you go, guys. We made it to the end. And it wasn't that bad, actually. It's actually pretty good. Go away, little bubble. Thank you. Okay, guys, so that's going to be the end of this episode. So thank you guys so much to so so much what i can't even talk right now thank you guys so much for watching if you guys enjoyed it do make sure to hit that like button and if you liked what you saw and you went episode three or part three make sure you come back and subscribe so that you'll get notified so thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you on the next episode bye guys